video we shall be discussing INIC ET week call 2024 biochemistry portion. I hope that the exam went well. Yes, it was not a very typical exam where we were expecting questions on glycogen storage diseases, sphingolipidosis. I don't know why it was not asked. But it was a moderate paper and we can say that yes, it was atypical but was not typical. So let's see. Which of the following is used in diagnosing a neoploidy? A question from genetics is expected in the INICET. And this question basically is trying to tell us that in what of the following techniques we can study the chromosomal structure. Fluorescence. In this video, we shall be discussing INICET in the called 2024 biochemistry portion. I hope that the exam went well. Yes, it was not a very typical exam where we were expecting questions on glycogen storage diseases, sphingolipidosis. I don't know why it was not asked. But it was a moderate paper and we can say that yes, it was atypical but was not typical. So let's see. Which of the following is used in diagnosing a neoploidy? A question from genetics is expected in the INICET. And this question basically is trying to tell us that in what of the following techniques we can study the chromosomal structure. Fluorescence in situ hybridization or in situ hybridization is a technique which is used for measuring the chromosomal hybridization or not, has occurred or not. Yes, it can help us detect aneuploidy. Conventional cytogenetics that is karyotyping which is still used and is still relevant for diagnosing a neoploidy. Then Sanger sequencing technique, it is a technique by which we can sequence the DNA. Yes, it can be used to know the DNA length. PCR can be used to know the DNA length. So all the following techniques can be used to know the DNA length. Then Deficiency of copper which is necessary of lacyl oxidase is seen in. So a disorder in which deficiency of copper is seen is Menke's disease. It is a mutation in ATP7A protein because of which copper uptake does not occur. And because of this there occurs deficiency. Copper is required by four enzymes and I call it salt. You know this, S is for superoxide dismutase, A is for amine oxidase, L is for lysyl oxidase, T is for tyrosinase. These are all copper dependent enzyme out of which lysyl oxidase is required for the cross linkages in the collagen. And that requires copper. Deficiency of copper can also result in poor collagen formation. Another question, a diabetic patient presents with high VLDL. It is due to combination of which of the following. Basically, my focus is in diabetic. And because of diabetes, the patient will present with low insulin levels. Now, I know one thing that you know that there is an enzyme hormone sensitive lipase and I have told this multiple of times hormone sensitive lipase will be sensitive to many hormones. You have glucagon, epinephrine, norepinephrine, LH, FSH, MSH, ACTH. It is sensitive to ADH but it is inhibited by only one man army and that is insulin. The same insulin however activates another lipase and that is lipoprotein lipase. Please note the function of two enzymes hormone sensitive lipase and lipoprotein lipase is identical. They will both convert triacylglycerol to glycerol and free fatty acid. Hormone sensitive lipase is an intracellular enzyme present in adipose tissue. Lipoprotein lipase is present in the intravascular enzyme. It is an intravascular enzyme. 
the comparison like LCAT, PCAT, hormone sensitive lipase, lipoprotein lipase, there will be comparison between glucokinase, hexokinases, they are always liked by ionine CBT. So yes, the answer is A, you will have high hormone sensitive lipase, low LPL and that is the reason that will increase the concentration of triacyl glycerol rich VLDA. Which of the following does not inhibit cytochrome? This I can proudly say, I have said this so many times, inhibitors to the electron transport chain and uncouplers, that is very, very, very important. So yes, cytochrome oxidase or cytochrome small c, basically they are trying to refer to the somewhere between the transition after the third complex and till the fourth complex is there. That is cytochrome oxidase. This enzyme or complex 4 is a copper containing complex and it require it is inhibited by carbon monoxide, cyanide, hydrogen sulfide and azide. All these inhibits complex 4. So yes, the answer is nitric oxide. It does not inhibit this. Enzymes not used in recombinant DNA technology are, we do not use isomerases. Phosphatases, they are the enzymes which will be required to remove phosphate. This will be required. Terminal transferases will be required to add the nucleotides or the addition of the last transfer of the last polynucleotides that is to form an overhang. And then we will use the recombinant DNA technology for the addition of CRISPR-Cas9. It is a hybridization of RNA, DNA for which we will require Cas9 protein and this hybridization is a recombinant DNA technology. You are re using these enzymes for RDT but we do not use isomerase. Isomerases are like you are having enzymes for all mutases, all resumases, anywhere we have used phosphohex or isomerases. Those are isomerases, those are metabolic enzymes but are not used for recombinant DNA technology. Which amino acid donates nitrogen to sodium benzoate when given for urea cycle disorder? This we have seen beforehand, before also that yes, you have sodium benzoate, it will combine with glycine to form the puric acid. This is also a phase 2 xenobiotic reaction where we are using glycine as a conjugating agent. And of course, in this process, glycine is getting excreted from our system and glycine is a very important source of nitrogen. And what will happen to the nitrogen in our body? It will be converted to urea. So which amino acid donates nitrogen to sodium benzoate? Clearly the answer is glycine. With this we have discussed the questions as I got on the recall. Please make sure that you, if, you, if you know anything in addition to this, put it in the chat box so that we can benefit all of us can be benefited from this and do not stop studying, keep studying because we are still to give a very important examination in 2025. Thank you and all the best. In this video we shall be discussing ionine CET recall 2024 by chemistry portion. I hope that the exam went well. Yes, it was not a very typical exam where we were expecting questions on glycogen storage diseases, sphingolipidosis. I don't know why it was not asked, but it was a moderate paper and we can 